Good morning, YouTubers. Um, it's the next day after I already installed the uh, wiring harness. Today I'm going to be assembling the trailer and I uh, bought it, uh, this trailer at Harbor Freight Tools. It's that foldable trailer and uh, let me show you the product number and uh, what I'm talking about. So the product I'm talking about, it's that, what is it? SKU087776 part you're looking for is 62666 there are like four different numbers for this trailer but it's the same foldable trailer they have in Harbor Freight it comes with two boxes one box like this long one and box number two it's by Hallmaster item number 62666 foldable trailer 1195 pound capacity it's 48 by 96 also purchased this extra spare we got we have all the parts in here and uh, for so what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna open up all these boxes see what we have and we're gonna start assembling you know laying everything out and assembling also I would like to show you the the ball they installed so yesterday evening after I installed the trailer wiring I got this uh, ball there you go for this trailer it's one and seven eighth one and seven eighth and uh, it's nice and then also got this two inch pin for, I mean that two inch pin it's you know the pin for the trailer and as you see, I did not hang the wiring connect uh, for the trailer because they're inside the trunk. Bought it all at Harbor Freight. All right, in this box, this is what we got. We got all these long metal pieces for the trailer. There's a warranty, and this is how the trailer looks like when you assemble it. Looks very nice. Owner's manual. In this box we got we got all the hardware spare the I mean not spare but we have tires here wheels we got the fenders we got all the attachment points we got all the bolts I think there are more bolts in here. Now these are electrical stuff. So, um, but we're gonna start working with this. We have to open the manual and lay everything out before. So I took all the long pieces, all the long U-channel brackets, whatever you call it, took them out and uh, just lay them out. There's an axle here. Uh, there's a trailer attachment point, chain, everything is in here, but uh, none of these parts are labeled. Like there is absolutely no stickers on these, none of these parts are labeled. So we got to build this by pictures. And uh, over here on this part, there's a VIN number here. That's nice. There's manufacturing date, April 2020, and then all, all your ratings. And uh, some of these parts like came a little bit scratched uh, in the box. Not a big deal. Um, but the point is, uh, how am I gonna assemble this if the manual tells you about all these parts, right? Like about all these numbering everything is numbered here but on the parts itself there are no labels so what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna look at this picture and we're gonna go by that I'm gonna find this beam and then these beams and we're just gonna lay everything out i'm gonna find the m10 by 20 uh nuts bolts and m10 nuts so let's lay it out so when I open uh, the package that contains the bolts, nuts, and everything, this is what I got. I got these hex nuts. 
I poured them all in that old oil pan and uh, this is what it says on the top 8.8 .8. Doesn't say anything like, you know, M10, uh, M10 by 20. <laughs> I opened the package and it all, that's all I had in here. In this package we have these long brackets and bolts and nuts to attach the uh, suspension components. See, spring and axle. In this one we have long, uh, the long bolts. This is a chain and everything for the uh, assembling the front end and attaching this and the hinges. So that's all we got. We're gonna assemble this frame. What I did, I lay everything out just like on the picture. See, I found this part, this beam. I put it up. Then I found the side ones. Just like in the picture and the middle one this looks like yeah this is a U channel one so the channel U facing on the inside so facing like that way towards the center of the trailer you know just follow the pictures looks find the right beam you know as you see this one has three holes that one has three holes there's one hole and three holes on the top one two three so it's like easy um remember when you were a kid follow the lego instruction and this beam has one two three four five six one two three four five six one two three four five yeah and now what we're gonna do we're just gonna put these bolts through just like on the picture you see This is how I attach bolts on this corner here here this is a 17 millimeter you know 17 millimeter also I took the 17 millimeter socket <laughs> and uh, what I did on the top I used my uh, impact driver and on the bottom I put a uh, open end wrench like this and then you just like tighten it up you don't have to go too crazy at this moment because we have to align everything so now I'm gonna attach this and then the rear corners and then the middle so I follow this picture I assemble I put all these parts I lay them out uh, what else I put these bolts uh, on the, each corner right just like on the picture Bolt comes out from the top, one from the bottom. One from the top, one from the bottom. On this corner, on this corner. Same thing on this corner. But I did not tighten these bolts yet. Next step, what I did, I look in the picture. I found these metal brackets. And you see how they go. One in this hole, one in this hole. And underneath here, this beam, the U-channel beam, also secured here was this bolt. One comes from the bottom, and one comes through the side, and here. These hinges, these hinges right here, the longer part goes on the frame, and this shorter one sticking out. Also, I follow the diagram, as you see here. And uh, now I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tighten all these bolts. <sighs> yeah, I wish Harbor Freight actually labeled these like, like here, number 43, 30, you know, it'd be so much easier, so much easier. But the pictures are very clear. You can definitely see that it's a U-channel bracket and it's right here, the U-channel. You could follow the images and just go by that so let's do this let's tighten these bolts and then we'll go to the next step we're gonna follow this front end assembly 
So all these bolts are secured at each corner. There, there, there. The brackets, the hinges, everything's secured, right? This is nicely secured. The next step, like looking at this, what we have to do, we have to find these long beams like this. See this part? And this part. And also on the front here, we have to attach these brackets. So let's find all these parts. This part, one, two, three, and these two brackets, and this part right here. Let's lay it all out. See here, I found all these parts just like by the picture. I lay them all out. This one goes through here, goes to this part, to this wall. So just follow the picture. This is the best way to do it. Lay everything out. Find all the components, even these pins. Just put them right here. And then, refer to your manual. See right here? And let's first, we're gonna attach these brackets, metal brackets with bolts. And as you see in the picture, the bolts, the head of the bolt is on the outside, just like here. Also, uh, looks like we're gonna need uh, long bolts, for 41. Yeah, not the short ones like we use here, but the longer ones right here. This one looks much longer, and the self-tightening uh, nut goes on the inside. And on the rest of this frame, we, uh, we're still using the same smaller nuts. They come on the top and on the bottom. So I found these long bolts. And uh, they're gonna go through here. Through here. And then same thing on the other side. Now in the package, you're gonna find these kind of bolts, right? One is longer, one is shorter. So, for this area right here, for this part, you'll need that longer one to go in because this whole thing is gonna be foldable, you know? And uh, if you put this fat bolt in, this part right here is gonna be on a thread. And when you're gonna fold it, it's just gonna destroy this fat thread. So that's not, not the right bolt. You need the long one and uh, then you secure it with a nut on the back. It's the same thing on that, on that side, we're gonna put this long one. Put the long one through, and put the nut, and then tie it up. You see on the picture, oh, you have a number 41, but when you open the package, there are no numbers, it's just, says spring and axle all the components chain all the components you don't see all these numbers on each bolt but you will figure it out so let's secure them let's secure them right now so what I did I put all the bolts through but I did not secure them yet I just want to show you what's next put these screw uh, bolts through here through here this bracket this front end, you know, and everything looks just like in the manual. I also put these pins here, so because I don't want this whole unit, this whole bracket to be going down. Um, these bolts right here, I already secured them, and they are going to be moving a little bit because this is a hinge. This part is foldable, also. So we want this, it's not gonna be tight. So this is gonna be moving a little bit. Next step, let's tighten these bolts. And uh, what we're gonna do, this is what I do. On one side, I use my 17 millimeter. And on this side, I just use my impact driver and secure these bolts. This bracket is already secured, but let me show you this. This is my impact driver, Milwaukee 17 inch socket. Just put it through here. 
and this end of the wrench just go on the other side. Go on the other side. Like this. And same thing with this end. And this is secure. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna move to these parts right here. Same thing. Use my you will go you will go absolutely insane if you do this by hand but we're gonna double check everything by hand got the point I'm gonna finish these the rest of them and uh, we'll move on to the next part all right people of the YouTube the front part is complete the fore part of the trailer this and this frame I attach the hinges I secure every single bolt so we're done with page six next part is gonna be the second part of this trailer, the frame, we're gonna attach, put it together and we're gonna attach the hinges. So I look at this diagram, I found this front part. This, um, this is what it is. Three holes here, three holes here. One, two, three on the top. One, two, three up there. And then this hole right here. It's pretty much Guys, you have to match the picture. No labels. You will not find number 30 on this uh, uh, rail. Hinges, you see? You see in the picture? Very nice picture. This hinge has a little divot. This is this one. It's gonna attach to the side here. Um, this rail right here has like this little, I don't know if you can see it. This hole is not round. It's not just like a hole, it's like a square, see? Right there. So that we know that this is the correct uh, rail we need, and it's like, like on the on the lower part, you know, on the down. So we know this is our right side. And on the left side, we found same thing. See the little square here. Actually, this has to go like this, this way. And now we can put it together. Harbor Freight, I wish you guys had numbers. It's not that hard to label everything. I mean, now we have to play, play like this game, you know, trying to figure out what goes where. But thankfully, thankfully, the images are pretty clear. Now, this bracket, U bracket, it's facing the center of the trailer, you know. See, this, this part. It has uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight holes. And on the top, it has one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So, Let's put it together now. Attach, I attach this hinge to this bracket on the one side and on the other side and also right here, this bracket right here. It's not secured yet, but it has tightened the bolts. The rear end has bolts going through. I need to secure them. And here. We're gonna secure these bolts. This rear part is all assembled. All, all the bolts are secured. The hinges, everything is good. Now, looking at this manual, we need this bolt, which is labeled 45, another 45. 
they need to go through and attach these two frames together because we're going to flip it over and we're going to do the assemb assembly of the suspension parts oh and i also missed on the rear these brackets let's get these done all right brackets are in place left and right now we're going to bring this rear frame together with the front frame which is right there so i brought these two parts together this is heavy so i was standing in the middle and lifting from the center brought them together we need two uh, nut, lug nut, uh, nuts to secure them together and uh, also we need to secure the hinges so one two three four like right here and you see how these hinges are this one was a little divot is on the outside and this one without it it's on the inside so let's put these bolts through see there's a bolt there there's a bolt there and in a hinge now we're just gonna tighten these bolts and the hinges too yeah the reason why we have to put these bolts to get through and secure two frame parts together and the hinges because we're going to flip it over and attach suspension components so let's do that let's flip it over okay guys i made a mistake once i flip this frame over this bolt i need to take it out because when i'm going to be putting this part for the suspension you see on this picture the bolt is not there so same thing here this bolt shouldn't be there so once we put this part out like this the bolt's supposed to go here on the top on the side and you see I made a mistake I put a bolt there so I'm gonna take that one out and then this square aligns with the frame square I know my terminology is not the best, but also on the other side there's a little square, so everything is to align. I'm gonna have to remove this bolt. So for this hole right here, we need to have uh, bolts, but a little bit longer. There's only two of them in your hardware. You will find out about these in a in a, <laughs> the hardware, just like I did. <laughs> so you see, these are regular M. They call them M20s nuts look nuts and these are a little bit longer These are a little bit longer the reason for that is because we're gonna go secure three sheets of metal here so this the bolts have to be longer one here and one at that end right there and the rest is gonna be the regular ones m20s and here we're gonna use supplied these kind of bolts so what they did they just put all these hardware all these bolts in one big bag nothing labeled so let's follow this manual this bolt right here is secured this bolt is secured this one is a little bit longer remember it's only two of them a little bit longer has to go on this end and then the other end now find this kind of bolt right and uh, align this hole so this piece right here fits in there so what you got to do you got to lift up with your foot maybe or in, in order to align this hole once we put this bolt through on the bottom you need to use a ratchet because I can't put my power tool Milwaukee in there so we have to use a 17 millimeter just to start ratcheting up. And based on this manual, they want us to put this kind of nut screw or bolt. Yeah, there you go. Put it through here and secure it. So let's do that. Because we're going to be installing suspension components on this side. As you see, I secured this nut bolt yep this is how it looks we're gonna move to the other side and install the same bracket on the opposite side 
and then they want us to do the they want us to do the uh the guard the guards for the the wheel guards and they want us to put the little wheels here so we can do that so based on this uh manual they want us to do the wheel guard and they want us to do the wheels but i'm gonna skip this two um, steps and i'm gonna go to the leaf assembly and the axle the reason for that because once it's upside down when you have a, a the guard is here and and then you have these metal pieces sticking out it's gonna be hard to flip it over so i'll install it once you know once i flip it over i'm gonna install the um the the wheel guard and i'm gonna install the wheels so let's do this let's start doing the spring right now and the hub so again find all your components these are the leaves here this is all the hardware for attaching them uh, this is an axle so put it all together and in front of you and then refer to your manual refer to your manual and start working right, i open up the leaves leaf springs they're pretty heavy it's a uh, three leaf springs and uh, they're supposed to go like set one right here and i'm gonna set one on the other side just to get it out of the way now this is all hardware for installing the axle and the spring and now let's go back to the manual and we're gonna tighten it all up through here and so this bolt right here this is 19 millimeter not not the uh, 17 so I found a 19 millimeter and uh, we're gonna secure the spring so the leaf spring is secured with these long bolts that came in a this little package on this side so is this side so it's good now we're gonna proceed with installing the axle now if you look in the manual it's unclear which way the axle goes like like you can't tell like there's a little notch right there see same as here there's a little notch so look at your axle and find this little little hole so now we know the axle is going to go like this this is a c shape i wish it was better made i wish it was enclosed all together but that's all right so i'm going to align this little hole that was the notch same thing on this side in the next step we find this c shape uh brackets right pull one here put one here then you take this plate and it's not really squared it's more like a little bit rectangular on the bottom here there's a bolt i don't know if you can see it yeah right there so make sure this clamp goes like this see if you line it if you align it this way this hole it's not the right way you gotta turn it and align it like this so you see how it's a little bit rectangular you gotta go like like this and then what we're gonna do we're gonna tighten the bolts securing the axle all right so now you have this c-shape bracket on the plate is underneath bolts are screwed in just take your 17 millimeter socket and tighten it very good well you cannot use a ratchet or a power tool for securing these bolts so what you do you can either take 17 millimeter like open wrench or you can just use this part and just secure it secure the axle all right so i found this long 17 millimeter socket and this and what i'm gonna do go on the bottom here
and looks like the axle is secured now yeah it's not wobbling nothing at all this bracket is sitting pretty good you can also check it by hand how tight it is but tell you what this is not moving anywhere every bolt is secured on the bottom here we're good with an axle good idea always guys check was by hand take the 17 millimeter ratchet and check it by hand if, if it's tight if these bolts are tight you know under on the axle because axle you don't want it to be moving or anything you know you're gonna it's gonna be a wheel attached it's gonna be on the highway so make sure your axle is secured very good you know see I can still have some room left on this bolt okay that's good check each side next what we're gonna do we're gonna install the the wheel but first we gotta take this dust cup and uh, get rid of it so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna punch it out out of the dust cap super important to have this dust cap you don't want any grease or anything dry out so let's install the wheel looks like uh, like you can see it's already greased on the inside but it's never gonna hurt if you put a little bit more grease There's actually more than enough grease on the inside and on this part this part will get messy to so put this washer nut start securing it so when you tighten this knot right don't go too crazy you know everything's lubricated on the inside put the washer this one right there put this knot make sure the wheel spins freely and now find this hole and hammer it this pin through here I found my hammer see how it came out on the other side now bend this outward you don't want this pin to come out so bend this outward This is how it's gonna look you see this pin is in bend it on the other side make sure spin the wheel spins nice and freely when you put this nut too tight the wheel will not spin you will destroy your bearings so don't do that on the other side some extra grease was pushed out but this wheel is not wobbling or anything spins very nice and easy very nice and easy all i'm gonna do i'm gonna recheck these uh lug nuts see how tight they are there's four of them and we're gonna put this dust cap back on if you cannot find these prints right like on that side i couldn't find it it's usually hidden in one of these so check on this other opposite side and you'll find these pins this side we also did the same thing we grease everything put the washer this nut screw it in put a pin the wheel spins nice and freely nothing is wobbly nothing is moving all i'm gonna do just gonna check these bolts also like i did on the other side and we're gonna put a dust cap this dust cap now one thing with these dust caps when you get them you cannot get them out on the other side like using a, a flat hat screwdriver you might puncture through so use something thicker that fits into the hole and then just punch it out so as you see here you know that's not a good idea to put anything sharp and trying to punch it out and um, yeah it looks good the wheel sprints freely let's uh, do the next step let's flip this beast over we're gonna flip it over 
and I'm going to install the fenders. I'm going to install uh, these little wheels here. You're going to have to install the lights, the electrical stuff. It's going to be hard, but we can do it. I did it by myself. I was able to flip it over. Use your back, use your leg, legs, you know, muscles. Flip it over. And uh, whew, let's do the uh, the little wheels. And uh, let's do the uh, wheel guards. These stands, you know, take this one, this piece. See how it looks? This is the, the rear left side. And these two holes in the middle, we have to align with these two holes right here. And we're gonna put bolts through them. Just like this. And then we're gonna use our 17 millimeter. And we're gonna secure these bolts. Repeat the same procedure on the right side. Right side is done. So also the left side is done. Now we're gonna attach these little wheels that came in the package. These right here. Super easy, super, super easy. Just unscrew this bolt. Put one here on the top, one on the bottom and secure the bolts on the back. Hey, these little stand stand on wheels attached. Attach them. Now they all spin freely. These bolts are nice and snug. The other side also. These stand on wheels are secured. And let's do the bumpers. These are bumpers. First we take this metal piece and it's got to go down there and there are two holes we're going to bolt it in. So now it's 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 loose, right? I didn't tighten yet. But we put these bolts through there. It's kind of hard to <laughs> to do that cuz there's not much space here. And underneath here, underneath, you know, we have to secure with the ratchets. And also look at this, pay attention. This bracket that secures the um, leaf spring. You see, there's this bolt that has to go through. Same thing on the other side. Attach the, um, the support for the guard. Now we're gonna... Uh, before, before you actually install this uh, tire, right? Just secure these two bolts that holding this bracket in place because it's very hard to get to them uh, anyway yeah you might have a hard time flipping this over but uh, yeah it's just do this secure these two bolts before actually put the tire on now we're gonna take this top one and secure it with bolts on the top. Easy way if you want to install this bracket to hold the mud guard, just remove the bolts, the tires that are holding the tire. I have an impact wrench, so it was easy. I just removed the tire, the lug nuts. Now what we can do, now it's super easy from this point. You don't have to do it like I did on the other side, the mistake, uh, it was very hard. Um, you can just attach it here and use even your impact driver or impact wrench and you can just secure these uh, two bolts on the bottom. Done. And we're gonna use the, we're gonna attach the top portion to the, to this uh, bracket. Now the fender is secure, very good. I put the uh, wheel back and now we're gonna use my impact uh, impact wrench and we're gonna secure these bolts we're gonna secure the wheel to the hub so our trailer is about ready everything is assembled only thing we left to do is the electrical stuff, the lights, 
turn signal, brakes, everything. And all the hardware is here. Everything is here. All right, let's start it and let's just finish this project. Before we do any lights, let's finish with this part. This is a hitch coupler. Coupler. Let's secure this hitch coupler as there are two holes. See? And we have those very long bolts that I mentioned before. We have them right here. They're gonna go through here. In a hardware packet where you have all the bolts, you're gonna see these two long ones, right? The longest one that you find, this is the longest one, right? It's going on the hitch coupler. There's two of them. Now, the shorter bolt and a little bit fatter, it goes to secure this bracket, all right? That's at the beginning, I was confused. I didn't know which where to go, but now this fatter bolt goes through here. It goes to here. And the longest skinnier one goes to the coupler. Okay, guys, here's another mistake. I made this bolt, this bolt, it has to be going on the inside, see, okay? on the inside, just like this, and this is the mistake, see, okay? since this bracket, this part will be moving, foldable, it, it cannot sit on this, on the thread, so that's why the bolt, goes like from the inside this way so that was my mistake and this is the fattest one a little bit shorter and fatter bolt the skinny ones go on the front all right let's start with the side markers two little holes right here one two and then screws go here and the wire goes through here so let's push these wires through there side the wire coming out on the back and I need a Phillips screwdriver for these little screws we are done installing the front side markers and uh, this is how it looks looks very nice and neat now on the back of this trailer we're gonna attach the brake light and the rear turn signal lights so these brackets are gonna be secured by those bolts numerous bolts that we have these so let's do that so this bracket secured on the left on the right take this light this one right here the one that has us white leds on the bottom because that's where the license plate is going to go this light is going to be attached to here but first we need this bracket see this bracket we're gonna align it. We're gonna align this bracket with these bolts, with this uh, bolts right here. We're gonna align it. This is how you do it. Put this plastic piece first. These, the white LEDs, that's gonna be lighting for our license plate. So let's attach this light here. And these are, this is a 11 millimeter socket. done not crazy just a little bit these are all LEDs not just the halogen LEDs all of this is LEDs let's work on that other side good the rear lights and the third signal are in place holds pretty good license plate bracket holding on pretty good nice so what we have left to do all this wiring we have to attach all this wiring to take your wires harness wires push them through here underneath here what you need to do you have to install these metal pins little metal clips that are going to hold the the um, cables in place this cable right here right brown and green it's going to be routed you know it's going to be routed you can use zip ties routed through this frame 
through this hole, through this clip. There's another hole here, but remember there's a hinge, so be careful when you're folding this trailer. So I'm gonna route this cable and I'm gonna attach these two cables to the cable that's over there. And also, we need to ground this cable very good. How I guided this cable, green and brown underneath. Put a metal pin here to this hole all the way along. Here, I left a little bit slack because this part is going to be folding. As you see, I got it just guided this cable along the little holes, put a little clip, left some space here, left some, uh, you know, cable extra, and guide it all the way to the back. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to secure this cable, the white cable, to the frame. Here, this wire, the white wire connected to this bolt. This is all connected to the frame through metal. So it's all connected to the frame. Um, and then also I connected this brown wire to brown wire, yellow wire to white, yellow wire. White wire, I'm gonna connect it here like this. Okay, it's secured nicely and now we're gonna connect green wire to green wire and brown to brown. Next step guys, we need to connect this white cable, white wire to the frame. So guys, this white is a cable is a ground wire, attach it here. I use a, I drill a small hole and I use self-tapping screw metal, that goes through metal, I attach it here, right? This is from this connector and now what we're gonna do we're gonna attach this one, this little cable that's on the marker, side marker. We're gonna attach it to right there. Yep, we're gonna attach it there. Guys, I ran into a problem with this Harbor Freight trailer. Everything works. The turn, sig uh, the turn signal works, the brake works, right? The problem is the side marker don't work up front. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take this wire, which is white wire ground, and I'm gonna run a completely new wire here along this frame. I'm gonna zip tie it, connect it to this one, and then connect it to that wire right there. So we're gonna do this on both sides because the reason is these side markers, these side markers don't work. And then same thing here, this side market don't work. So I'm just gonna run a nice wire along this frame on both sides. The Home Depot about 24 feet. Uh, this kind of wire, primary wire. It's even a picture of a trailer there. I'm just gonna run this wire along this frame, along all these wires. We're gonna step here and then at the end. See here? around this white wire along this side all along through this hole all the way to the back same thing on this side we did that and let's connect everything let's start over here I'm gonna strip the sand and I'm gonna connect to this white wire white cable twisted the wires nicely and then you have these kind of uh, wire connectors twisted in place done now let's move along let's move along to this white cable we're gonna cut this cable right here connect it to this one right here and put the connector all right, this side is done next to a side marker here. Now I have a solid ground. Let's move along here and uh, attach this cable to this little spot right there. Back here on the right side, we do the same thing. We splice these cables. I mean, we strip the 
cable we're gonna twist and turn and then we're gonna put a connector in there this is the right side the rear right side so now it's done let's move along this right side to the side marker and uh, let's do some connections here first of all this brown cable I'm gonna reconnect to this brown cable so I'm gonna make a triple connection what I did here the brown cable the brown wire that runs from all the way to the back it attaches to this brown wire on the side marker and also this brown wire goes to the front now we're just going to put this uh, connector right here, the wire connector, standard wire connector. So this connection will be good. Now, this cable that we run from the back, the white cable, we're going to connect it to the side marker. And also the one from the front, the ground wire, we're going to connect it to the side marker. So triple connection and the wire plug yellow connector. To do, connect these three wires at the end. This is our connector. Now we have wiring running, ground wire running to this side, to the marker, to the rear one. Same thing on this side. Now let's just connect them all together. Get to use this uh, wire connector. Okay. So now it looks like our wiring is done. I'll just plug it in, see if what works. Moment of truth. Let's turn the hazard lights on. Very nice and bright LEDs. Hazard lights, yay. Let's do the turn signals. Left turn signal, nice and bright. Let's check the right one. Right signal, nice and bright, beautiful. Love these bright LEDs. Brake light work, very good. Very nice, brake lights. And let's check these side markers. Let's see how it happens. Side marker works on this side. And side marker works on this side. Beautiful. Now let's check the front. See if it's all good on the front. On this other side. On the right side. Very nice. And the rear. Very good. I'm gonna use a uh, electrical tape and I'm gonna also on the top of this I'm gonna cover it with electrical tape, wrap it, and we're gonna zip tie these cables like nicely right here. Okay, I zip tied it all over here. I zip tied it to the bracket and on the inside there's this metal clip, metal pin. Here we have guided the cables through the uh, little hole right there. And then another one right here. And we need to leave a slack. So let's fold this trailer and see how the cables are gonna be. Before you fold this trailer, remember these square bolts? I remove this one here and remove this one here, both sides. One here and one here remove them and also pull as much pull some slack so you have cables let's uh, see how it folds now nice we can do we can secure these cables nicely since we know how much slack do we need see that Put this pin right here, stretch the cable, put a zip tie there, same thing on the other side, same thing there, gonna make it look nice. Now we're gonna secure these cables. Alright my friends, YouTubers, finish wiring, that was kind of pain in the butt, but we did it. I hide all the cables here. You can put another zip tie. I go crazy on zip tie. Put another zip tie here. 
since I did it here. So when you stand up the trailer, when you unfold this part, these wires are gonna keep hanging. But that's fine. Um, let's put this trailer down all the way and see how it goes. For this wiring, you must have to put some kind of like a Velcro or something. Because when you fold this part, you need to have slack on these wires because it does, you know, pull a little bit. So, see like on the back I did here? Left a little bit of slack. That's fine. That's because when this hinge folds, it pulls on these cables. Finished the project, guys. I'm so excited. I'm gonna perfect these. I'm gonna put Velcro straps so every time you unfold the trailer. I'm gonna actually strap these in. I connected the chain on both sides. Went underneath. Yes, there's a bundle of wires here, but uh, that's okay. Better have extra wires than not anything at all. Let's connect this cable. Yep, it's long enough. Let's plug it in. And let's go for a ride. Yep, perfect. Everything attached here. Put this pin. Put this. Let's go for a ride. Every light work. Third lights work. Also, we have. I turn on the headlights so the side markers are on. Also here, side markers on, working. So that means we connected everything correct. This side marker also working. It's a nice bright LED at night. Beautiful. This trailer looks amazing. This is my setup here. Since my car, the RAV4 a little bit sitting lower. This is out of mark, uh, court uh, receiver. Toyota is gonna be attached here, but anyway, the court works very well. Um, and I installed the, the hitch, as you see, always secure it, always double chain, always do that. And Kurt actually has this loops here, so you can secure the chain. This is solid. Make sure this pin is here, guys. Make sure this is locked. This is one, uh, 718 ball. And make sure, see it even says ball, 178 tongue, 2 and a half capacity 2,000 pounds so very nice I mean I like it and on the side here you have a tire size and everything else and make sure these pins are here too so I'm gonna also install like the, um, I'm gonna install here the plywood I'm gonna secure it with, through these holes um, you'll see later I'll share it with you and here, like I said, it's gonna be a Velcro. In the meantime, just tape. <laughs> I have no more zip ties. Looks beautiful. Well, there it is. Now you know how to assemble it. And now you know how it looks on the RAV4. Also, I installed uh, at the last minute this uh, spare tire carrier. You can uh, buy it at Menards for like $26. This uh, attaches very nicely on four big bolts. I think it's a good idea to have it, you know, if you go kayaking or whatever, you're towing something on a long distance and you need to change tire. There you go, you have a spare. I also installed this spare tire, but that's what I did. You go to like Menards or Home Depot, you can buy like this like a U-shaped bracket and you just put it underneath it here, take a washer and bolts and secure it. You don't need to spend money on a special like carrier, this is what I did it before, you don't need to have that. You can just do it like this, save money, you know, and it holds pretty well. Just an idea. I mean, unless you want to go to to the store and just buy like a spare tire, 
tire carrier which mounts over here but this is much easier looks cool looks nice and it's secured called u-bolt there you go it's 480-12 900 pounds 990 pounds capacity and so if you have uh, any questions now you know also guys now if you're going on the trip right let me turn on the lights if you're going on the trip or whatever you know you don't want this to be bouncing around because you unfold your foldable trailer let's say you were storing it right there are two bolts you can secure them here one here and one here also on this side on this side here let me see right here and right here so if you don't want this trailer to be bouncy let's say you're not planning to fold it you go on a long trip might as well secure it like that thank you again for watching my channel my project was it was a pretty big project it took me like four hours to do this and harbor freight did not label any of their parts so i had to look at the pictures and figure it out but uh if you follow this video step by step you will be able to do the same exact job and i think it's always better to have like grounding cable like to have actually a, a real grounding cable right here like what i did here because i had a bad connection to the ground so i decided to uh, send the wire here so have a good day have a good evening enjoy our, enjoy this channel there's more cool videos coming out and i hope to see you soon